very challenging skill. Baby, I burnt off my edges trying to do this freeze. And, the, <laughs> and I was like, I walked to the mirror. My whole face was red. My edges was empty right here. And I was like, I think that might be the end. I'm too cute for this. I'm yeah. Too- no. No. Yes. Yeah. Hello, hello. I'm Dana. This is Words That Move Me. Welcome. So glad that you're here. This gesture that I used with my arm just now, I'm getting very comfortable with the video format. Listener, if you are driving in your car, if you are listening and not watching on the train, I just made a very graceful rolling motion with my left arm, and now you're cued in. You know everything there is to know. I do, however, encourage you roll on over in uh, onto YouTube to watch this episode because my guest today, Yoey, is simply stunning to behold to watch her express her stories um in person was so much fun because for the last couple of weeks uh several days i have been reading her words and listening to her express herself through words on a page big big fan of her dancing and now i am also a fan of her writing her book is called so you want to move to la and we go in on that today on the podcast i'm so excited to share but first let's do some wins Today, I am celebrating returning to protecting my fitness time. Today, that meant 20 minutes, right? It wasn't a lot. I did not get a full yoga in. But instead of saying, oh, if I can't do a full 30 minutes, I just won't do it. I said, okay, then I'll do 20 minutes. And I'm counting that a win. It's like, that's a small, big win. That's a small, big win. I'm really proud of myself. Um, I hope that my win also gives you permission to do things in digestible lights including winning. You can win in Digestible Bites. Uh, But now it's your turn. I'm going to pass the mic. Tell me, even though I can't hear you, (laughs) uh, what's going well in your world. Say it out loud. It really helps. And or just like, you know what? Hit me up. If if you know me right now or have my Instagram handle at Dana Daners, I want to know your win. Yes, I'm calling you out, listener. Tell me your win. I want to know. Make it real. Come over. You're wearing okay. You're wearing your shirt. You want to come up? She didn't. She didn't. I wanted her to come up. Okay. Congratulations. I'm so glad you're winning. Keep it up. I'm proud of you. I'm cheering you on. Um, and you know what? That is a good segue. Because I think Yoey and I in this episode cheer each other on quite a bit. So if you're looking for somebody to be rooting for you, look no further. It is my guest today, the one and only Yoey. Please enjoy. That was me being Usher. No. <laughs> Yoey, welcome to Words That Move Me. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think this has been a long time coming because I've been an admirer of your dancing for quite some time. And then I was struck by an Instagram story of you dancing recently in Usher's show. And I had to comment. I was like, whoa, you better fucking dance. Thank you. For real. And then you were like, hey, are you a reader? And I was like, I am. I've got books. I know the cutest and, little bookshelf. And my latest addition to my bookshelf is your fucking book. <laughs> We're going to talk about this. Um, and I'm thrilled. Thank you for writing this and for gifting this to me and for of engaging course. and for helping young dancers because Ooh. this is a tool. It's a, it's a, it, it is a gift. And Thank you are a gift. You. Thank you for being here. Before we talk book, though. You have to introduce yourself. Ooh. Tell us everything you would like us to know about you. Okay. Well, my name is Yoey Apolinario. I'm originally from Tampa, Florida, but I've been here in LA for about eight years now. I grew up in a dance studio doing like technical styles first. And then when I was like 19, I got into freestyle, tried a lot of different things, started with breakdancing, quit that very quickly. Um, and I ended up at 
popping, Memphis joking, mm. and the most recent clown dancing. So mm. that's kind of where I ended up at the end of the tornado. What a journey, or or in the middle of it. In the middle of it, because it's not done. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. I understand that So You Think You Can Dance played a big part of your dance journey and your yeah. kind of proclaiming and owning street, the, 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 this is what the show called it. And by the yeah. way, I did not watch any of that season until I read the book and I went back and watched a few of yours Woof. just because I was excited. Um, I was, I was turned off by the idea of stage versus street. I kind of don't even like the word street street styles, styles to, to encompass. What do you prefer? <sighs> I know you mentioned it in know. here. Hold on. I do know. Come you said on. It. I leave. I take notes also because. Oh, me too. And I gift books to people with my notes in them. And then oh. they, they have to play detective and like figure out what in the hell this gibberish means. Because oh. I like circle underline. Sometimes it's color coded. That What does the red They're mean? Like, what Nobody does knows. this color mean? Black American folklore and should be revered as such. Like, don't is. call it don't call it street styles as if street is the only place that it happens. Yeah. Or if street, yeah. I it's Black American folklore and should be revered as such. Because it, it is from street culture, and I'm not negating that, and mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful. I just don't. You know how different words can have different feelings depending on how you say it. Mm -hmm. It's that because I've experienced that word being said from people as like dirt at the bottom of your shoes, like, and that's maybe because I grew up in like the college dance program type of life. Mm -hmm. Like I went to a performing arts high school and we modeled college dance programs. Okay. And anytime Which we, means classical ballet, modern, the end. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> they brought in the, we had a treat. It was like on a Friday for three weeks, they gave us some um, master classes from Alvin Ailey's dancers and they okay. taught us jazz, African, just pieces from Revelations. Like it was- yeah everything for me but other than that it was just ballet and modern and if they heard you did something else or you went to a dance convention and you did uh, hip-hop they were like oh you're you're doing street styles so that's something less than yeah so i don't know it's i don't mind it but when it comes from different people it's like it's said with such a like a oof. or when it comes from a production such as so you think you can dance that mm. Ha takes place literally on a stage it seems like an imbalanced uh proposition you're saying yeah. stage versus street but all of them are happening on stage and i was like all okay so when are the stage dancers gonna have to go jump in a circle or when are we gonna shoot this episode you know at a party or at a in somebody's basement yeah. like let's I, anyways i was turned off by that, uh, by the way that that season was framed i didn't watch any of it but i really like the way you talk about yeah. experiencing the show and the the tour that followed, uh, yeah, tour life is a really interesting concept that for so many dancers, I think they aspire to. Like, yeah. I, I can't think of a dancer that doesn't want to go on tour. No, of course we do. That's like what we watch. It seems like up. the dream gig, yeah. right? Which, as you know, and you explain here, <laughs> nothing is actually an actual dream. Two sides to every coin. Will it be dreamy? Yes. yes. Will it be trash? Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that's really fun. I do want to talk about that. Uh, but I want to start. I, I want to start first of all by congratulating you in writing a book because I know that it's hard because I tried once, Honey. Um, and it turned actually into this podcast. Words that move me. I love that. In 2017 was a book. Oh. I have in my little Adobe Illustrator, a, my little like transcript of the original version. Yeah. It at the time was a quote. And then on the facing page, the story of how that quote came into my life. And then I kind of, I got an illustrator. I got my ISBN numbers Yee! for the ebook and the book book. And oh, I had, you were on your way. I was on my way. I had an editor who got down with a red pen. Come on. She oh. was like, I don't think you understand how an ellipsis should be used. No, I feel so <laughs> illiterate I was like, every time I get my manuscript back. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're like, really? <laughs> Do I speak okay, English? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and I, I, it was a, an excellent process of learning. And then I got a lawyer. And my lawyer was nice. like, you know you need written permission from everyone before you use a quote, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, some of these people are dead. And she was like, well, then you need to contact their estate. Oh, that's and I was like, oh. So it went on the back burner. It turned into yeah. a podcast. And it, all that to say... As I read this, every single page with respect and oh. and just like and champion like huge roars from the sidelines because I know it's not easy to do. Honey. Um, so congratulations, number one. Thank you. It's called So You Want to Move to LA. 
And in the very beginning chapters, you talk about nobody told me the shit that I needed to know. Is that really your why, why you did this? Because you wanted to fill the void? Yeah, I wanted to fill the void. I wanted to just let some people know if they don't know already that it's not all roses out here. And And it's not all shit that you learned in dance class. Most of the things you wish you knew had nothing to do with dance. Yeah. Most of it. I, I really want to say for me, like a good 99%. <laughs> like <laughs> Almost all. Just real life adult things. Right. That I'm still learning. Oh, taxes. Yo. Every season. Every Is there year. a chapter on taxes? Yes. So, I'm it's not towards the end. Yet. I, just like full disclaimer. I, I'm almost halfway through. <laughs> I'm not a tremendous, like, like I'm not a fast reader. Yeah. And I read late at night, which is also when I sleep. So no, sometimes one thing too. leads to another. But I have to compliment you on one thing in particular. I don't know you that well, <laughs> but I can hear your voice oh! through this book. And it's probably how, like, I'm pointing at Riley off camera who edits the podcast. It's probably how you can hear my voice from reading this yeah. night after night for like four or five days. I can hear your voice so clear. And sometimes it pops up like in my day to day life. So, Awesome. That's crazy. Isn't it crazy? I, oh, I love well, that. Well, are you prepared for people to know you better than you know them? I mean, <sighs> it happens for like celebrity types all the time. <laughs> and you've become that like in your experience on the show yeah. and things like that. But people are feel, about to feel like they know you. Honey, yeah. Because I put, I buried it Everything. all in that book. So even there's chapters about my first tour and like how I don't want to spoil it for you, but I had a whole bunch of crushes on women and then ended up sleeping with a man. Don't know how the, <laughs> yeah. I got there, but... One of the women that I, I had a crush on, like like butterflies, I don't even stare at me for too long, like crush, she bought the book. And I <laughs> randomly throughout my day, I'm just like, hmm, I wonder if she's going to put two where, and two together. Where's she at right now? In, where is she in, at in the she book? At? What's, she just, what's, what's she learning right now? Does she read it? Does, Does she, she know? Does she know? Because, you know, I changed all the names and yeah. stuff. and. I really like your name choices. By the Thank way. you. And I have questions for you. You know, she even asked, she was like, don't try to be a detective. Just enjoy the book. Puts on and glasses. Like, <laughs> mm, it's very hard for me not to. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay. So is there anything, at, you know, all is said and done and it's shipped that you wish you had done differently or, or are you just like, yep, that's the one. That's it. You know, and I, I don't, I don't mean to take it down, but I noticed towards the end of the book, I had all these different versions of my manuscript. I'm like, sure. Because you do all these different rounds of self-edits before you send it to your editor. Mm-hmm. And somehow within that process, I lost about three chapters. Oh. Which at the end of the day, I'm like, hmm, did I, everyone really need to know that? I don't know. But huh. one of them was a love letter to Twitch. And I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm glad it, it didn't make it to the book. I feel so personal that I kind of don't want it to be read yet. And when the time is right, yeah. If 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 you should choose, there might be a whole spinoff project there where we ask from the dance community for individual letters, and that could become a oh my goodness a, a book a standalone. That would be beautiful because everyone has such beautiful experiences with him, and like. Um, I, I have obviously heard and seen a tremendous outpouring of love, uh, and there is something about memorializing and making a physical thing, um, of it. And I, let's, let's, let's keep that idea alive because that might be very, especially now that you know how to do it. (laughs) Like like first one may be the hardest, but, Mm -hmm. um, I, that's, that, that speaks volumes that. It feels personal in such a way that even in a very personal work would be out of place. Yeah. And, you know, it still feels so fresh and kind of unreal mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. So I'm like, it's it's not time. It's not, not time. Not, yeah. We're still grieving. Not time. Uh, is there anything in the book that you keep getting feedback on that you're like, shit, I didn't expect that to, to be the thing people are talking about? <sighs> Let's see. I keep getting messages on my first tour, man. So everyone wants to know who that uh-huh. is. I'm like, girl. People would. They you always want to know. all this shit about, like, how you need. 
how you survive, how you pay your rent, yes. how you book gigs, how you audition. And people are like, who was the boo? Yes. Okay. Who was the boo and who? It's human though. That's human. It's human. Yeah. We want and to know the do, gossip. And we do want to know all the rest of it. Yes. But I think that's another thing you do really well is like salt and pepper or like a spoonful of sugar, the medicine. Yes. Because I'm learning, but also I'm like, oh, that's fun. Ooh. That's the tea. Like that's, yeah. I can absolutely see mm-hmm. oh and we're gonna we're gonna talk about something nasty in a second Ooh. i can see the party uh-huh. pre going out on tour yeah where you're having a connection with somebody that is genuine and more than normal right mm-hmm. like not casual like something special about it but yeah. not threatening this isn't a romance this isn't a, a thing that someone else is threatened by and it gets blown out of control. The way you explained that scene, I could see it like Ooh. I was there. And I there are so many other moments that I was like, this is universal. Yeah. This is a real, this is a thing. But maybe just that a lot of people haven't had yet. Um, and I, I don't know, I felt, I saw a lot of shared moments in there. Oof. The one I want to talk about right now, you and I share, and I hope... I know we're not alone, but I hope not too many more people ha- have to experience this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, finding out that you were let go on Instagram. Yo. <laughs> finding out or finding out that you were fired. Yes. Via Instagram. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's never. Your story is awful. Will you share in words? Will you tell a little bit about what okay. happened? And then I'll go because <laughs> I hate this story, but it's, I think it's, uh, actually a battle scar that I wear proudly yeah, and is a mark of like, people talk about, you're going to get rejected. You're going to get rejected. <laughs> but I think when people hear that, they think we mean you're going to audition and they're going to say no. There are many levels of rejection. So many <laughs> and, levels of rejection. And, and yours really have my jaw on the floor. Please share. Oh my goodness. Well, we were getting ready for a show. We had about, it was a, a smaller show. So we had maybe like six numbers. I was choreographed in all of them. Spots, just... We How fit long in did costumes. you rehearse? About three weeks. Okay, I'm pretty sure we rehearsed for the 2020 experience in three weeks. So, I mean, well, that is insane and that yeah. rarely happens. But this is like music videos for perspective. We'll rehearse a day or a half a day. Yes. This is something substantial enough to ha- to to require three weeks of rehearsal and go. Three weeks and six days out of the week. So you're spending most of your time at oh this Lord. rehearsal, oh not Lord. at home. You're with these people. You're getting to know them. And after the rehearsals, we were going to get on a plane, go <laughs> board a flight and do the show overseas. And I never got my flight confirmation. And that wasn't weird to me because we always got our rehearsal times late. Uh-huh. Our schedule was changing. Our rehearsal starts at 9. It's no, it's at 10. Yeah. It's Everything was kind of up in the air with yeah. this camp. So yeah. when I didn't get a flight confirmation, it wasn't a red flag immediately. Yes. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'll just get it later. And then the day rolled around that we were supposed to leave. Uh-huh. And in my head, I just assumed that the day got pushed back. Uh-huh. Oh, we're leaving in a few days next week. I don't know. Uh-huh. And I got on Instagram. I just saw all the dancers at the airport, just like living a whole life. And at first I thought it was a select group. Maybe half Some of the group. went early. Yeah. Half of the group goes first. The second half goes later. And then I, I counted every single dancer except for me. Yoey. As I'm reading this, my jaw is on the floor and my heart was in like little shambles. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. I was not prepared. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Because, yeah. you know, you. I think most people tell you the audition and that that's the type of rejection. Yeah. I was not prepared. Once you book the job, <laughs> you book the job, right? Oh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only able to laugh now because I have been in it. Similarly, I, I worked on a project for a very long time, pre-production phase of preparing an actor for a role in a major feature film wow. as movement coach. Oh, nice. And then uh, the the film shot, put your detective glasses on, in Australia and it wasn't sure whether or not I would go. Okay. And I just really worked to tr- really try to make myself irreplaceable. Every day my job yeah. was to be, I'm going to contribute so much value that I am undeniable I should be there. Imagined myself there, was doing all sorts of like, I wouldn't call it manifestation, but like thought work towards the idea that I would be there. Even yeah. though I knew it wasn't guaranteed, it wasn't 
I never signed a contract that said through the term of the project or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I did have a contract and, uh, I, you know, waved, waved the actor off. Goodbye. We'll see what happens next. And then I saw on Instagram, oh. a, a different coach with her name on the door, like movement coach. What? And I double tapped it. Cause I was like, yay, movement coaches all over the world doing big <laughs> gigs. Good for her. And then, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then it wasn't until hours later that Sherlock Holmes was like, what was the geo tag on that? Was there a location on that post? Was Whoa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Australia. Yeah, that was the gig that I thought was my gig. But wow. the truth and the realization and what you illustrate here as well yeah. is that that actually wasn't my gig. No, That wasn't. wasn't my gig. Yeah. I had imagined it as mine. I had visualized it. I was working towards that as a goal. But the fact that I wasn't there wasn't wrong and it wasn't bad. And the thing that caused me the most suffering was actually thinking that it was wrong and bad that I wasn't there. Yeah. But once I had – actually, my sister helped me with this. Um, I, I was talking to her. I was like, dude, this is a kind of rejection that I have never felt. And she was like, that's so funny that you think you were rejected. Hmm. And I was like, I was rejected. Like I was that, like up. I was <laughs> like I was really like I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, that's so funny because for nine months you were chosen. Like yeah. for nine months you were on that job. Like yeah. that was they chose you every single day for nine months. Hmm. And you're just not looking at that part. You're, you're looking at the, like these days or this yeah. chapter of it. And I was like, whoa, the feeling in my body changed Ugh. immediately. And it's wild that both of those thoughts are true. Yeah. I was not chosen and I was chosen. For nine months. But when I choose to think I'm rejected, I'm not wanted, I'm not good enough, where I go yeah. is, oh, it hurts. And when I choose <sighs> to think, man, I delivered for nine months. I really did an incredible job, especially I had never really served in this capacity before. Mm. I was like first time in it and just doing my best. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that was... And you probably learned so much doing that. Learned so much. The most important thing I learned was how much I love that work. Oh. So to to allow for one rejection to be the end of it would have been a terrible tragedy. Yeah. So I, a, I'm a meaning for all of it. Totally. Now you don't see till the end. Right. Or, or till later. Till later. Your time. Well, so I'm glad also when I read your experience of that story, also glad that that didn't end you. Yeah. That was a show. Many tours would follow and many, you yeah. know, uh, artists would follow. If you had let that be the end of you, oh we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have the, we wouldn't have the, we rest, wouldn't of have the rest of the book. Right. Yeah. Whoa. So, and I don't know. I feel like we also seem to forget that this line of work we chose is so seasonal. True. It was going to come to an end or a pause ebbs, anyway. Ebbs and flows and goes and stops and pauses and like when it rains, it pours. Like, I don't know about you, but I have definitely had juggling three gigs at once. And then I'm like, okay, You're maybe like, wow. I should be looking at... It's a little silent here. <laughs> right. Um, do I need to like put calls out? Like, yes. should I be? Should, I and I, I understand it's a very privileged position to come from that I have never had to pitch myself. Mm -hmm. like, I've never yeah. had to. Hey, do you need a this? Hey, yeah. I'm free. Do you? Does anybody? Is anybody looking for a? Or hey, agency, very slow around here. Yeah, but that's because of projects like this. Yeah, projects like the Seaweed Sisters and things that I have that are my own that are always working. I think that's um, so necessary to have as a dancer. Like right. you can't pour all of your energy and heart into this because in, or there's into, so many. Or into somebody else's cup, like the yeah. Usher cup. If you gave all that you have and all of your interest and all of your time yeah. into the Usher cup. That book wouldn't have come out. I've been in that Usher cup for three years now. Can we talk about the Usher cup? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I really love watching you in that show. Ah! I had never, I've never seen it. Is this still happening? Please tell me it's still happening. No, it came to an end. Our last show was December 2nd. Oh, yes! she left the set. Yes! I'm sorry, baby. She left the set. I'm so sorry. Oh. Off my All the emotional before. support dog. Shit. Oh, damn. Comfort me, Riz. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. It's is it will it be released as a as a theatrical release? I'm devastated. I hope so. Pissed over here. I hope so. I 
I think, fingers crossed, it'll be released in theaters. But okay, um, he's they, they did film it. He is doing Super. Are you doing Super Bowl? That's to be determined. Oh my god, oh, we'll find out on Instagram. We'll find out. Um, I hope we don't find out on Instagram. <laughs> but I, uh, every clip that I've seen on Instagram is you. I don't know how long it's been this way, but you mm-hmm. have uh, the the traditionally male role wardrobe. Yeah. Is that how how it's always been or is that no. a change that came later on? Year one was funny. I started the show as a as a male dancer uh-huh. and then at the end of the show I was a female dancer. So at the beginning of the show, act one, act two, I had a suit on, a koofy hat. Um, I had a little crop top on, but I was, was like the only female dancer not in like a dress or a skirt and heels. Okay. And they still had me wear makeup. So I felt like very in between. Okay. But I still did did all the male choreography. Okay. For act one, act two. And then act three, act four, I had a bodysuit on and a wig. And I was doing all of the female choreography. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> was I'm so curious to hear the behind the scenes conversation of that. Do you know anything about that? I have no clue. All I know is year two when we started rehearsals again and was going over everything, teaching the new people, the choreography. Um, Rio, the choreographer, was like, oh, for this part, Yoey, come here. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this dance? He was like, yeah, you're going to be a guy the whole show now. And I was like, okay. Like, I didn't even think to ask any questions. I was like, okay, say less. Wow. And it's just been like that since then. Oh, 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 right, Rich oh, Roll? Oh, are you excited? Woof. Woof. She says W-O-O-F. You excited? <laughs> I'm just that was like an down. amen. So it was. It was like woof. <laughs> so I think it's normal. I mean, I've danced for Justin Timberlake for many, many years now, mm-hmm. and the way that Marty structured a lot of that movement, first of all, was many, many years ago. Yeah. When when it was normal to gender dance roles, that yes. was like we said those words: the guy part, the girl part. And I'm loving seeing more fluidity, mm. not just in what we see on stage, but in the way that we explain it. Yes. And um, I I worked on a film earlier this year. I choreographed a film earlier this year where I had a skirts section and a trousers section because there were a, a, a lot of wow. um, a, a lot of crossover in terms yeah. of like gender identity and who's dancing what part. And I really loved seeing that but what I love even more is that there are some really heavy hitting male dancers on that stage Marvelous is one of my favorite dancers of all time period Marv and Cliff like are legends and it still like hits me that I am on stage with them let me tell you what hits me is that you aren't just with them you are holding them (sighs) like supporting in a way that I like my eye goes my eye goes to you yeah. So no, it's, sorry, Marv, but no, I, that I, happens. My eye goes to you. You're not the only person who shares this opinion, and I get that, that my a eye lot. goes to you. Yeah. Okay. And I it have gives also me anxiety. received this. I've received this before, and I'm like, shit. That means I'm not doing a good job, because yeah. if I'm meant to be background or supporting uh-huh. talent, then I shouldn't be distracting. Yeah. Do you think you know what it is that draws people to you? I don't know. Besides. That I'm obviously a woman, the only woman with them. Okay. And a lot of the that's like, funny. Only you think it's numbers. obvious? Mm, I think it is, but there there was a a couple of shows where people came backstage looking for the light skinned boy with the ponytail mm-hmm. to get his number, and I was like, I hey, didn't, I didn't that's think me. I didn't think it was obvious. Dang. And that might be why I'm drawn to it because yeah. I know you, and I just like it is proof that the water we are swimming in is sexist. Yeah, that it is so ingrained in me that it be a good thing to blend in with the guys. Like, why would that be a good thing? I can't explain <laughs> why I I feel that way without just pointing a very sexist finger at myself and the mm-hmm. world that I grew up in. In terms of like objective, um, measurable things, for example, mm-hmm. stamina, for example, strength. Yeah. You you don't stand out as being slower, weaker, softer, uh, less capable in any way. So I yeah. think that that is a testament to your oh. all of those measurable things that we can measure. But also like a hunger, an appetite, and a strength that is more traditionally male yeah. that I see as being sexy as shit. All, any gender. Yeah. Um. So I think it's such a great example and I want the world to see it. 
because it inspired me so much. Oh, thank you. Yo, you're welcome. And I'm just, I'm really blessed to be with the group of men that I'm with because in the past I've, I've trained with mostly men before. And okay. My first crew was mostly men and I don't know. I feel like things got a little weird once I got a lot of attention or I got good. Oh. And when I started getting so much um, praise uh -huh. and people saying, my eye only went to you, I was only watching you, and they would say it next to the other male dancers, I would be like, so you're telling me it's Ooh. not a, a, a girl thing to get jealous? <laughs> no, yes, men get jealous. Let's yes, talk they do. about it. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, they, they, I feel like they came and recognize it. They just look up and they're like, not really liking you at the moment. Wow. They, they, can, they can't even tell why. Whoa. So I, I don't know. I've experienced that. So when, when I started receiving so much praise, I was like, oh God, they, they're going to hate me in like six <laughs> months. And they always Man. prove me wrong. Man, it sucks that for a woman to think receiving praise is going to come with hate, that those things are yeah. side by side. As soon as I start doing well, men are going to hate me. Yeah. As soon as I start doing well, women are going to hate me. As soon as I start yeah. doing well, anybody's going to hate me. Ah, oh. I know, but I don't know. I've been here three years, and Cliff and Marv, the OGs on the cam, have broken that cool. fear every time. And nothing like, but support from yeah, them. Yeah, nothing but support, which yeah. I, I am so thankful for. Because More of that, oof. please. Yeah. Ah, I... I I don't know Cliff as well. I've I've known Marv for a really long time. I would yeah. love to have him on the podcast because I think yeah. championing men who champion women is something that's missed. Uh, it's like a, it's like there's a huge opportunity there. Why are we not celebrating the men who Let's celebrate talk women? About it. Yeah, yeah. So out there. that's huge. Um, okay, gender gender thoughts aside, mm -hmm. um, I want to talk a little bit more about how you transitioned this being a dance studio oriented person. I mean, this is the same type of binary that, that we talk about men and women, studio yeah. and street. But I, I, because I am born and raised uh, Aurora, Colorado, and my mm -hmm. mom put me in dance class when I was three. Yeah. And I moved to LA when I was 18. And my finding of my own voice happened because I got challenged out here because somebody mm. was like, oh, you think you're a dancer? That's adorable. Oh, you're a robot. Like you're a computer uh, uh -oh. who's just like spitting back other people's moves. Oh and goodness. it was like, no, I'm... I might be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I am terrified when I have to fill in the blanks. Yeah. And that person was KML, B-Boy KML. Wow. And I will never forget that day really changed my life and helped me to... Uh, make freestyle a focus the same way that I had made being a chameleon was a focus. That's what yeah. everybody championed in my, in, in my studio growing Blending. up days is like, you've got to be good at jazz and tap and oh ballet and this, and you have to do this person's style and that person's style. And this conversation with Kamel helped me see, uh, or actually here's the way I spun it in my head because it needed to spin in order for me to not move home and just cower tail between my legs and quit forever. Yes. Cause it was that profound. I was like, I'm scum. I'm scum. This is awful. Oh. Um, this is how I spun it. Even as a young person, I was maybe 19. Um, I thought to myself, man, he's not wrong, but he loves one thing. Mm hmm. And I love many. Yes. So I must have something. I must have, like, that's, a, that's an asset. That's a strength. Yeah. So if I can love jazz and tap and ballet and tango and mime and acting and musical theater and wow. this and popping yeah. and book styles and I like, yo, listen, I will, I will watch B-Boys <laughs> from the sidelines with, like, stars in my eyes eyes because that's some shit that I just can my body is not yeah, it's no, not, not no, built no. for it it wasn't there for me I'm built for different things but I love and respect so many things so I tried to harness my big love yeah and funnel it towards a skill gap that I had yeah it's a skill gap it doesn't mean I'm a bad person or not mm -hmm. a great dancer or not yeah. meant for this it just meant that he funneled his passions into freestyle yes I funneled mine into many different disciplines and I have the ability to change the direction of my funnel where I put my love and how my love for dance and how it shows up. Yeah. So that was important. Um, what was your, did you have a breaking moment or did you have a conversation or did you have 
thought shift that is what bridged that well those worlds around like 18 i started working at this dance studio and closing up the studio and the studio owner was like if you want you can stay in there you can dance you can choreograph use the space however you want Mm -hmm. so i started posting all of these like contemporary improv videos me on the floor and stuff on facebook and youtube and (laughs) one of the b-boys in the freestyle scene in florida in central florida commented on it and he was like hey that ground move you did was kind of crazy like you should learn how to break and just like that just like that i was like planted "Mm, i never thought about it but i'm down like i'm here i i'm about to graduate I'm not really doing anything outside of like my regular classes. I would love to learn something new. Mm -hmm. And funny story how I knew him anyway, or of any freestyler in the scene, because, you know, those worlds Mm -hmm. tend to be kind of separate. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There was this big battle in Tampa that was a battle and a showcase. And they would ask like local dance studios, like the older people, because it was like at a club in the club district area. So Mm -hmm. They would ask older dancers from the studios to come perform in between the battles, like top eight performance, top Mm -hmm. 16 performance. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And my studio went to perform. And between one of the breaks, instead of a performance, they had the prelims for the battles. Nice. And it was an all-style battle. And in my head, I was like, well, I do like four styles. I do ballet. I do tap. I do jazz. I do hip-hop. I do all styles. I do do all styles. So I entered the prelims. (laughs) Yes. And then when we were lined up for the prelims, they started calling people out. I was like, this is, everyone is just doing hip hop. Oh. Different kinds of hip hop uh-huh. that I don't know uh-huh. the names of yet. <laughs> but the, I don't speak all these languages. I don't. Uh-huh. Not in one bit. Even in uh-huh. my little baby hip hop class at the dance studio. Oh, for sure not. I don't, I don't speak oh, this language. Oh, for sure not. And no one here speaks mine. And I went out. Made it to top eight. <laughs> like It was just like, it was thrown in there. Fantastic. Because they were just so loving and they were excited that someone else like decided to try mm-hmm. and do them while they were doing it. I don't know shit about shit when it comes to battling. But I can say that as an observer <laughs> from the outside, it looks like for the most part, here's what, I, here's what I'll say because I know Instagram. Yeah. It looks like that scene is more encouraging, more nurturing, and more yeah. supportive than Instagram. Yeah, than Instagram. And honestly, it was night and day compared to my dance studio life. Talk my life could be yeah. so rigid. Oh, and there so, was some shady. There was yeah. some mean girl shit at my dance studio. If it's studio. not from the teachers, it's from the students, or even yeah. the students' mothers. Like It can oh, be shade coming from students. all these different directions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And to just go out and do something and no one else in the room does it. And they're like, yeah, that's hard. And I'm like, oh, for real? You like me? Yeah. You thought I was good. Okay. <laughs> you like yes. me? Well, then I'm, I'll come back. Totally. Yes. Okay. So, that makes so I think sense. I entered like one or two battles after that, just doing jazz and contemporary. So I started to make friends yeah. in the freestyle scene. So that's how that b-boy saw my video and was like, do you want to learn? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to learn. Amazing. I quit in like three weeks, but... It, like, propelled me to other things. Very challenging skill. Baby, I burnt off my edges trying to do this freeze. And (laughs) and I was like, I walked to the mirror. My whole face was red. My edges was empty right here. And I was like. I think that might be the end. I'm too cute for this. Yeah. No. No. Yes. I didn't get a single thing out of that. Poor baby. And then one day I was so tired because what? Break dancing? All like, the energy in your body just so that you don't break your neck. Yes. Like, so that you don't die. Like, I'm okay to work hard for something, but I don't need the risk to be, like, really serious Life injury all the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I was like, me. today I just, I don't got it in me. And he was like, that's fine. Like, we can just freestyle. And I was like, uh, no, I can't. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, no, that's not where I saw that going. I was so scared. Okay. I was like, I can't. Okay. No, I mean... If I play like Mumford and Sons, maybe. <laughs> or, uh, yo, you brought Mumford James and Blake. Sons into it like that. Yeah, I was like, if you put on James Blake, we can, but if you play anything else, I cannot do it. <laughs> okay, so what, what shifted that? Or was there, this is a question that I usually ask in the burnout round yeah. portion. Do you have now, and was there at that time, a song that made it possible for you to freestyle? A song that anything slower uh-huh. was like the only thing like 
So Erica Badu or Jill yes, Scott yes. or Willow Smith. But if it got any faster, I was like, no, I can't. And the it's turnaround. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's just, but I got tired of being that scared. Like yeah. I got, I got overwhelmed and just over it. Like, why do I want to throw up every time I do this? Uh-huh. And what I was think, the answer to that question? Did you ever answer that for yourself? You know, honestly, I don't think so. I just focused on, well, maybe if I keep doing it, that feeling will go away. Nice. Like if you keep working like any, at yeah, it, yeah, 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 it'll get better. Like me and my friend Crystal Jackson used to text each other after every battle and be like, "Girl, I felt crazy. I felt crazy too. Right? When is when is when it gonna is not gonna feel say? crazy?" <laughs> and we're like, "I don't know, but let's just keep going." Like, okay, does it not feel crazy now? Does it feel like your native language now? Freestyling, yes. Uh-huh. Battles, it's give or take because uh-huh, uh-huh, the energy fair. in the room shifts. Fair, you know, yes. and the person that you're battling that changes, and so. you don't get to control that factor. No, so I think that changes as the situation or the event comes. But mm-hmm. sessioning, no, I I love it now. It's like a big explorative playground. Like nice. you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, and that's the fun part. Oh. Oof. And they can still be bad, but oh, they can be really very good. Very much so. Yeah. Oh, very much so. So one of the early philosophies that helped me explore freestyle willingly without mm-hmm. making it like my job yes. is that I believed, and I need to reinvestigate this. I don't know if I still <laughs> hold this as, as a belief, but mm-hmm. um, that every person has an, a certain amount of whack, whackness, whack moves, whack transitions. Yeah whack musicality in them Uh and if you don't let it out it will show up when you really don't Uh want it to yeah so i used my uh like freestyle time as like let's just try to un like let out the unfunky shit like let's let's like brush off whatever cobwebs or nasty unfunky shit is in there Mm -hmm. so that when i want to be fresh i can yeah and that helped just like making unfunky or uncool or unsexy or un natural the actual goal actually unlocked finding kind of oh that works that one I really like that or that's odd or I didn't see that coming or um that gave me a tremendous amount of permission for my freestyle to be something other than what I thought it was up until then which was cool Mm, like yeah all the people that I saw freestyling embodied and represented cool yes there weren't many examples of odd or other or even uh, or so even necessarily really yourself. or even necessarily theatrical yeah um or emotional mm-hmm. it was a lot of fucking cool people doing cool moves the cool music and yeah. i didn't see myself as that so, you're like, so where do i fit where do i fit yeah yeah i think there's still kind of some truth in in that like purging the whack moves mm-hmm. one of the things my first crew used to say the floridian song they used to say you're the dancer you are when you're dog tired Whoa. That's the dancer you are. Oh, it used to overwhelm me. I'm like, oh, so I'm really trash. Oh, <laughs> but like, they mean it to say like, when you're really tired, that's when like you start pulling out things that you didn't know you had. Yeah, because you purged yourself of all the other moves. Yeah. So now I, f- I find the beauty in that. I'm book. holding that Ooh. so true, and I'm like trying to not kick myself while I'm down. Yeah. <clears throat> Thinking about like some of my first, I, I, I. It's been years now. I don't even know if this party still exists, but. Funk box in, in New, New York. York? Is it so? I exist? don't know because I went in like 2018. Long time ago, right? Oof. Okay, okay. So I think the first time I went to Funk box was probably 20, like 10. Wow. Like or yeah. or maybe 2007. I think it was around the first time I went on tour, and wow. I remember feeling crazy that at 4 a.m. people were having their best rounds. Oh my goodness. And I was like, and they've been going the whole night before all that. night long. I peaked at like eleven, <laughs> and I was like, "Ooh, I'm really yeah. doing it. I'm at the club. I am dancing," and <gasps> I felt great. And then it was like one, and I was like, mm. "I'm sleeping. I'm so tired." Yes, and I'm whack now. Also, my cool shit is gone. Yes, and I can't repeat it because all of you are watching. Like oh, you don't y'all know. saw it, right? Y'all yeah, yeah, saw y'all have been here this whole time. And I remember being like, "Okay, that's a tell. That's like, yeah, that it was. It was a big move for me to get into it, mm. and there was a big move for me to get to that point where I was like, oh, 
there are levels of this. Yes. And I'm still at level one. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's still levels when you when you get higher up on the pole. Like mm-hmm. some days you don't want to dance at all and you're like, why? And then I don't know. I used to be so hard on myself for not mm. wanting to dance every day. How could you? Mm. Like mm. what? And then I just started like going with the flows of my creativity and letting other things inspire me. And I don't have to train my hits every day like I used to when I was right. 19 to feel good. Like right. I can just let it come and go. Ooh. Thank you for that reminder. I needed to hear that today. We got this. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> um, do you have favorite freestylers, people that you would point point to to be great examples of next level? The one I, I'm thinking of right now, who I watch as often as I can, um, from from Ghetto Funk Collective, Joshua. He's mm-hmm. Obviously, I love locking. My dog's name is Wrist Roll. Um, and this guy, I think the level that he has ascended to yeah. is locking as expression, not locking as a style. Mm-hmm. I feel like he is expressing himself yeah. with a vocabulary that we would call locking. But if you think that you just saw a sandpoint or a wrist roll, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. Not until you, you saw seen the, him. N- no, it, it's it's really something else. Do you have anybody like that? Oh my goodness. I don't know. This question has been hard to answer since I was a studio kid. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. for me, I was always really inspired by people around me. Uh-huh. So I couldn't say like, oh, it's Mia Michaels. Like for me, it was like this girl in my class it's, whose leg was up here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like it feels very small town to me and it uh-huh. still is that way. So I don't know, and not to like flex on my own crew, but this collective I'm a part of called The Council. Okay. Everyone in the group inspires me for different reasons. Mm. Like, and just to have them so close to me feels like all of that is going to rain down on me if it hasn't already. Like, I'm there. Even though I don't feel like I'm there on a on a certain day, just being in that atmosphere and training with them and dancing with them and conversing, I'm like... Whoa. This is next level. Whoa. Um, okay. Ready for the next phase of conversation. Come on. I'll stay ready. Wrist roll with it is the name of this portion. Rapid fire questions. Ooh. Stressed already. Okay. I know. We'll start very easy. This is, I, I don't know why I've been asking these people uh, or asking lately, asking my guests these questions. Um, but I'm just going to, it kind of breaks the ice in an easy way. Okay. Favorite dessert. Oh, regular cheesecake with a strawberry on top. Okay. Cookie or cake? Cookie. Ice cream or coffee? Ice cream or coffee? I meant tea or coffee. But you can tell where my brain's at. <laughs> Whoa. Tea or coffee? Tea. Dogs or cats? Dang. I know. Dogs. I was just going to say, you know, she can hear you, right? She can hear me. I don't want her to turn on me. <laughs> Dogs just love you no matter what. I know. Cats, and cats like, kind of don't love they you don't no matter They don't need you. I'm saying this. I got two cats and a dog, so I don't know. Okay. I really just feel like cats are like so independent. They're so independent. That they don't need me. And I'll be real with you. I need to feel needed. I need to feel needed. And that's okay. It's so fine. Okay. Okay. Um, you could do a collaboration with anyone, living or dead. Who is it? Whoa. I know. This isn't real, by the way. I can't pull those kind of strings. But okay, just okay. imagine. Dang. I might be red for filth, but Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. I have to break. I always break from these. I call them rapid fire, but let's just be real. <laughs> it's an opportunity for me to take monologues. Yes. Riley and I were driving and playing Fuck Killer Mary, <laughs> which my is one of my favorite game. games. My it's favorite a great game. way to pass the time. And what was it? Prince Michael. And who was the third one? Was it Michael? Oh, no. Prince? They were separate. Prince. Hosier, I have a crush. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh. Like, you know, if he's side by side with Prince, Elvis. that it's a big deal. Oh, Elvis. Elvis. Oh. Okay. And, mm. and oh, I'm not going to recount the exact one, okay. but do you want to play? <laughs> play. With those three? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. One more time. Hosier. It's, I know, it's fine. Um, Elvis and Prince. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that Hosier, his name is Andrew, is a six foot four man from Ireland who just sings and writes like an angel and might not be typically hot, but holy shit, he does him. it for me. Feels like a nice life. 
like and a he's long... the greatest poet of our time. You will, you will feel loved. I feel like I will feel art and love and maybe live on the hillside in Ireland somewhere. Very green, no matter where. It's surrounded by green. Yes. And water and yes. Ooh. So you can tell where. Okay. I fuck Prince. Seems okay. like a great old time. And I'm going to have to kill Elvis. Damn. Fair. I think it happened anyways. I mean, it's just, he's it right. Yeah. Okay. The I think our big takeaway was like, I don't know that I could be criticized by Prince. Like, I don't know if I could survive. Oh, man, a long. Like, well, like, well, sleeping with him. Yeah. Like, because I just assume that he has slash had slash was the source of the greatest sex of all time. Has to be. Has to be. Must be. The way they were flocking to him. Come on. He's five, like five, two. Oh, baby. Something has to be happening. Something is going on. Other than he's a great musician, but something's going on. And I just don't know if I could receive criticism (laughs) from like the source of the greatest sex of all time or the sexiest Mm. man of all time. Like, what if he was just like, "Mm." hmm. I don't know yeah. if I could take that. That's why it can only happen once. So you can't marry him. That's why right. you have to, have to marry him. The one time. Yeah. I think that the was my time. first answer too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Mary Hosier. Fuck Prince. Kill Elvis. Was that my answer? Uh-huh. I love this game. <laughs> Do you want to play? Yes. You, give, me, give me one. Oh my goodness. Okay. Celebrities? <laughs> Anybody. Oh, I'm trying We've to never think. done this on the podcast We've never before. Done, I'm like kind of stressed out. First. I'm stressed too. Oh lord! It's just because it's now now become a very adult podcast. Also, I used to really think that my listeners were like <laughs> convention kids, and then they aren't. So I love to hear that go. though, because then it allows you like a little bit of freedom. Yes. yes. Also, I swear like a sailor. Yo, my mom. It really, I get it from her, and she hates that I say <laughs> that, but it's fucking true. She I knows. So. That. Why she always is as is telling me like stop fucking swearing. It's my mom's famous line. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks, okay. mom, for right. the example. Yeah. Hmm. I'm literally tense. I'm like, my hips are freezing up. I'm so Your stressed. hips are freezing I'm up. I'm so stressed right now. Okay. As if it's real. Like, right? I get, yeah. <laughs> like you're about to walk into a <laughs> <Yes>. room. <laughs> okay. Do you know who Paul Walker is? May he rest in peace? Yes. Oh, baby, got it. Okay. Paul Walker. Woof. Hmm. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith. Okay, <laughs> come on. I like where we're going. Parker, Will oh, Smith, shit. and let's do uh, Pop and Pete. You just really fucked me up. <laughs> oh, you just really fucked me up. Podcast guest, by the way, Pop and Pete. Come on. He's going to have to come back once <laughs> we reveal the answer of this. <laughs> shit. Oh, you really fucked me up with Pop and Pete right there. <laughs> For like my entire dance life. That would be like fuck Pop and Pete. I want to know. Like that, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> but now, because I especially because I know that man. Yeah. I I adore and highly respect. Yeah. Um, I think I would marry Pop and Pete. I mean, seems like to keep you laughing for the rest of your life too. He's rest pretty funny. Life. I I'm not gonna lie. It wouldn't be bad to be financially supported by a Will Smith or a Paul Walker, but Uh I love making my own money. It's part of who I am. And also, let's be real, they would probably make me sign a prenup if we got into that sort of arrangement. So um, that's just where my head goes. Uh, Already (laughs) thinking about the end of the marriage, right? at Okay, classic. Uh, Yes. Man, yeah, that really is my answer. Mary Pop and Pete. Okay. I'm going to fuck Will Smith. Period. And Paul Walker, you are really Double. good looking slash I'm sorry. But something about when they're already deceased as well <laughs> makes it easier to say that you would kill them. Yeah, if he was living, I, that would have been a harder choice. I know. That's why, that's why I get nervous but, playing this game. Because I'm like, I don't want to kill nobody, but like, I got to kill somebody. But it's the game. It's yeah. the whole of the game. Oof. Okay. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You're a married you, woman. I'm not going to do it. I do think it would be fun to have a podcast, a spinoff podcast that's just dance edition, fuck, kill, or marry. That and just get be, people into all sorts of trouble. Oh, yes. I like to do that in behind closed doors all the time. It's, Especially when you're in a cast of it's people. It's one of my favorite <laughs> on-set games 
to be playing and and you can tell you can see because sometimes you're playing as a group yeah. and then you can see later on spinoffs of like just three people and they're it's because the other names are the ones that are being used in that round of fuck kill me oh, okay goodness. uh we're back we're back okay 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 <clears throat> although we could get uh, that's a great game we could play uh forever. an album that you could listen to forever <sighs> oh my goodness let me take it back you have to listen to one album forever what is it Ever. You won't get any other ones. It's just the one. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Nice. How many Grammys did she win for that? Like 11? Oh my goodness. Or like set. I so swear good. it must have been seven. Could you look that up? Yes. Very curious about that. But people need to know for sure. What's the last song you like belted out, like full voice sang? <laughs> okay, so Jill Scott has a song called He Loves He Loves Me. He Loves Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The live version Ooh. from like this 2000 early 2000s performance in an award show uh -huh. that specifically like the video is like a vhs wow. like like that old, yeah, yeah that they just like slapped on youtube and the way she sang that live version i've memorized it all wow and i i yeah that's <sighs> the last thing i, I built it out probably i think that was like two nights ago fantastic yeah uh i have christina aguilera stripped on loop in my car right now yes I think the first song, other than the, there's like a prelude. Is it Unstoppable? Is Can't that what it's called? Down. Is it called Can't Hold Us Down? Uh -huh. Are you sure? I'll check. Come on. What's the one that I'm thinking of? Un under there's one. Uh, there's a one word song that okay. is also my jam. Oh. Can't Hold Us Down was good, but it's not like she's not like like singing it. I mean, Fighter, obviously. <laughs> beautiful i mean come on that oh, album I, I have built it that that oh. might be if you ask me this question today the one album i could listen to forever if the last week is any indication it is christina Infatu aguilera stripped oh my goodness infatuated it was very good it's weird underappreciated that's the one i was thinking i haven't listened to a whole album in a while but the oh only it's all time I, I do right now really it's all i do right now the only time i do is at the gym and it's the britney spears blackout album nice i don't know why i have to feel like a different person at the gym because i hate the, the gym. gym yes I hate, so i have to feel like a pop star like work i, I have to <laughs> exactly you whatever work, it bitch. takes man yes. whatever it takes um okay uh blah, blah, blah. Mm. Ooh, music video you wish you were in Ooh. okay so the first one that came to my head was remember the times and the other one was, um, you basically are in that video, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I can see it. I don't know whose face I'm replacing with your face, it's but mine. I can see it. And for the life of me, I wanted to be in Work It, Missy Elliott. Yes. For the life of me, like that I wanted to era. be that Allison whole Stoner. Era. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> she was really unfuckwithable. Yeah, that gets still, your freak I mean, on. you can't like, undo that. You can't. It's done. It's history. Get your it's freak legendary. On is so good. Like. This is going to sound like so, I don't know, such a random thing to be like, oh, this made me want to be a dancer, but it really was Allison Stoner. Was it? Yeah, because I was young and yes. I was a little girl too. And, and I was like, and because oh. she's fan-fucking-tastic. Yeah, and I was watching it and I was like, I thought you had to be a grown-up to be a professional dancer. Or to dance like that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I didn't know you could do this as a kid. I want to do it. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Um, okay, when you're not dancing, what are you doing other than writing books? Reading. <laughs> Awesome. I What's your favorite reading. book? Whoa. Okay. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. It's okay. going to be a movie soon. Ooh. So if you haven't read it, you should look it up. We'll Amazing. Is it? A it's a fantasy, like Afro fantasy. Okay. So she uses real deities um, from a Nigerian faith, a Yoruba faith yep. called Ifa. Mm -hmm. And um, she kind of takes that world and mixes it in with like fantasy like powers and people Sweet. with these different skill levels and Sweet. a lot of people call it the black avatar the last airbender because that's what it kind of feels like it's just oh uh. and i grew so up excited. in the yoruba faith with my family so help me remember because i only know a few oshun yes and there's yamaya yamaya there's baba luaye or batala oh, i did not know that one there's, i think there's i, I think i learned of uh a, only through African dance and learning, yeah. working towards being more familiar with the African diasporic movement, mm. I learned a handful and I remember just feeling like this is the most natural way to explain movement. Yeah. It is, it it did feel like magical. It did feel yes. like, because there, I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but I have a healthy Lord of the Rings, which is 
embarrassingly exclusively all white oh cast. I will goodness. say that. Um, but I have a knack for the fantastical. Yeah. If it's science fiction, if it's outer space, if it's elves and wizards and shit like that really Count sticks for me. Yeah. And so I think when you explain movement through the context of magical forces and powers and things yes. that only your imagination can work up, you wind up having a really remarkable dance thing to look at. Ugh. When you explain dance through like point toes, shoulders no. down, it's less remarkable to look at. No, but when you magical. explain it for it as this is the goddess of sweet things and honey yeah. and and or or like waves and tumultuous waters oh. like then yes you get dance that's yeah. fucking remarkable and so. dance is a main part of worship in that faith so it just like kind of makes sense <clears throat> it makes so much sense okay the name of the book one more time children of blood and bone okay fantastic thank yes. you for that you're welcome um okay couple last ones okay. what scares you Ooh, for the longest you know i think i'm trying to work out of this the thing that scares me the most is feeling like I'm not utilizing everything God gave me. Mm. Whoa. Like, because I don't know, as creatives, I feel like we have all these different passions and gifts and things that we're good at and that we could even like be better at. And mm -hmm. I, I always want to know that I'm striving my hardest to get better or to massage these things that I love to do and, I, I don't know, my fear was always like looking up like years later and being like, wow, I wish I could have devoted time to that. Or like, wow, it really fell short there. It really yeah, fell short there. But I'm trying to, I feel like that can get unhealthy really quickly. So I've been trying yeah, to reel that Yeah, if you use in. that against yourself, for sure, it's a great way to like white knuckle grip, grip yourself into doing all the things and burning out or finding yeah. an unhealthy complete lack of balance or something 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 i'm I, sure i feel like that's what made me so fake busy like fake busy it's fake busy like especially when the pandemic started fake busy i was so fake busy so when fake the, busy? everything was closed in mm. the pandemic i was mm. like oh i have to wake up and do this i'm doing yoga blah, blah. and i was like why am i doing all of this there's literally no place to go right now which is why you were doing all that <laughs> what lights you up what lights me up mm -hmm. I, don't, I think sheer joy like that I think that's why I'm a dog person, because they're just full of joy, no matter what. Children, I think that's why I love the clowning community so much, because everything is just so fun. Like, this yeah. dance is, it's really an outlet for them. It's yeah. not a job yet. It's yeah. not an Instagram follower thing. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. just training, getting whatever they have to get out. Yeah. And they're having so much fun while they're doing it. That's huge. And it's fun for everyone to watch. It's like making the neighborhood brighter. That's awesome. I think just watching sheer joy is it, it brings me joy. Cosign. Last one. And this is gonna be big because you like to read and you fucking wrote a book. Well, what are the words that move you? What are the words that move me? Yeah, this might be a quote or like a North Star kind of guiding principle, a poem, a mantra, an yeah. affirmation, a, a or it could just straight up be words. <laughs> this is going to be funny, but one thing um, that really stuck to me when I met my wife, Sheopatra. Who also, uh, tremendous respect. No, she's one of the most phenomenal dancers I've ever seen. Like, that was me collecting my face and trying to put it back together. Yo. She's really, really remarkable. And I love the way that you speak about her in the book also. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. She just, that's what drew me to her. Like I was in a whole relationship, a happy relationship when mm -hmm. I met her. And uh -huh. I was just like, she's amazing. I have to know who she is. Yep. But when I started dancing with her and I expressed just like my fears and how I was feeling, my insecurity, she was like, you're good. Just every time you dance, every time you step out, pull your dick out. And I don't know why. <laughs> the dog's the, reaction. The dog said, oh, I'm out of here, this bitch. She was like, say less. <laughs> I'm going to have to go outside for that. That moved her. That moved that her. Moved her. But just yeah. get your dick out. Just every time you step out, pull your dick out. Pull your dick out. And I don't you know why it. that really sat with me. Like, even if I'm scared, if I'm not feeling like the greatest or the most amazing dancer right now, uh -huh. I'm about to pull my dick out. Like, Whoa. I don't know. Kind of vulgar, but. I love it that. Sat with that me. Is, that we've never sat had with one me. quite like that. I love. Right. I Because there is something to that that means, or that I associate with power just like yeah. pull your power out but it's also being exposed 
it's your, it's not just your power it's your vulnerability it's yeah. it's it's a part of you that not everybody gets to see like that's a private part of you yes literally pull out your private parts pull out your private parts yo <laughs> and that it happened to be a cock and balls yes i'm like i i love like this. do it strong lay that shit on the table do you think of that often when you when you freestyle or is it only when you're having like struggle bus i think it's when i feel like i'm in a space where i don't know where i fit so it could be male dominated like the freestyle scene sometimes mm -hmm. i'm just like mm. or it can be i don't know i started um choreographing for this animated series called monster high and i never done anything like that before uh -huh, so uh -huh. i'm in these meetings with these people and they're saying these things and i'm like oh, what's happening just like in spaces where you don't know you don't feel comfortable in you just got to step up and pull your dick out. <laughs> like, and we really do mean that metaphorically. Yes, please do not that pull your genitals out. Like, I'm in a meeting. I've ne I don't, I'm not really <sighs> confident. Imagine. Yo. But HR. I saw it on a podcast. It has to be true. That is the yeah. sort of shit. That's why I'm glad that this book exists. Because it's like, let me tell you the way that it really is. Yeah. Um, Yo, wait, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you for doing this and shining your light on stages and on pages. Oh, I didn't even know I was going to say that. That was Whoa. Nice. Now, Bars. while I'm on a roll, please click the subscribe button, leave a review and a rating. It really helps the podcast. If you like what you're hearing, share it. Um, thank you again. Thank Get you. out there into the world. Keep it very funky. I'll talk to you soon. This podcast was produced by me with the help of many. Big, big love to our executive assistant and editor, Riley Higgins. Our communications manager is Ori Vajadares. Our music is by Max Winnie. Logo and brand design by Brie Reitz. Thumbnails and marketing by Fiona Small. You can make your tax-deductible donations to Words That Move Me, thanks to our fiscal sponsor, the Dance Resource Center. And also, many thanks to you. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're digging the pod, please share it leave a review and rating. And if you want to coach with me and the many marvelous members of the Words That Move Me community, visit wordsthatmoveme.com. If you're simply curious to know more about me and the work I do outside of this podcast, visit thedanawilson.com. <laughs>